Okay, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. So, <clears throat> in today's lecture, online lecture, we're going to solve two problems from the design of riveted joints. So, these problem statements are given in the lecture slides. So, let's start with the first problem. So, first, I will import the problem statement. Uh, So this is the problem statement that we are going to solve in this lecture. So it is written that you have to design a riveted joint and uh, the, the thickness of the plate is 5.5 millimeter. And we have two options. One is the triple riveted lap joint. Second option is double riveted double cover part joint. The values of stresses are known, which is for plate is the U strength is 500 megapascal and for the mild steel, for the width it's the mild steel with 450 megapascal. It's also required that you have to find the efficiency of both the joints and determine which one has the of the joint as a higher strength. So now we have actually two major parts of this problem. The first part is the design of the joint. The second part is the efficiency of the joint. So in a riveted problem, riveted joint problem, you have to find either both things or any one of the things. Either in the problem, you have to find the design, and you have to determine the design as well as efficiency. In some problem, only design can be demanded or only efficiency can be demanded. But when we have this kind of problem, when design, design has four major parameters. One is called the diameter of rivet. Second is called the pitch of the rivet. Third is called the <coughs> back pitch of the rivet, which is different between two rows of the rivet, and fourth is called the margin. So these are the both four parameters which you have to um, <coughs> determine in order to uh, design a riveted joint. And when you talk about efficiency, the efficiency is all about determining the minimum force per unit length, per pitch length. So we we, we, we have a shear load, we have a tearing or tensile load, we have a crushing load. So we have to determine all three loads and then we have to see whichever is lowest. So based on that, we have to find the efficiency of the joint. So let's start with the uh, <coughs> first problem. Uh, that's the first joint that is. So the first joint is triple triple riveted lap joint. So the first part is the design of this, design of. So have to, first we have to design both type of joint. So let's say, now the plate mm is 5.5 mm thick. So as you remember from your lecture, that in case when the diameter thickness of the plate is less than 8 mm, you have to use a relation that is PS equals to PC, whereas the shearing load is equals to the crushing load. Now, in case of a triple riveted lap joint, and I'll just draw here, just to give you an idea, a triple riveted lap joint could be more like this. You have two plates, for example, and you have the, that is one, two, three, so there could be three rows of rivet, rivet. And rows are like this. These are the rows. This is the first row. This is the second row. And this is the third row. And the load is applied in, in this direction. Clear? So this is, you can say, is the triple riveted lap joint. And because plates are overlapping, that's why it's called lap joint. Now, for the diameter, of the rivet, we know from our the understanding of the concept that we have to equalize the shearing load and the crushing load. Now, because it's a stripper, it's a lap joint, so we have a one shearing area. So one multiply by pi by four d square. This is the area of the rivet, and the load will be used as tau allowance, which is the 
allowable shear stress of the rivet equals to now you have to auto multiply with n which is the number of rows in this case the number of rows are in this case the number of rows are 3 so 3 multiplied by 1 the one denotes the shearing area per per rivet which in case of lap joint is 1 and <coughs> crushing is 3 times which is the again into dt times sigma c allowable which is the allowable crushing stress of the rivet now for the allowable stresses we know that tau allowable is equals to sigma y over 2 into factor of safety now 2 is used uh, uh, used 2 is used for uh, by considering a maximum shear stress theory and factor now in this problem factor safety is not known but when you got problem in exam now factor safety is clearly mentioned so let's say factor safety here we take it as 2 clear if factor safety is not given you can take the factor safety greater than 1.5 clear but 2 is an ideal value you can say it's good enough so sigma y is and you have to write it not for the plate but for the rivet because this ps is in the rivet the shearing load shearing in the rivet and crushing is also in rivets so the sigma y should be used for rivets so it's 450 it's 450 divided by 2 into 2 so the answer will be 112.5 mega pascal in case of the crushing load just right here in case of sigma c allowable so normal stress you have to just multiply by factor of safety so it's 450 over 2 which is 225 mega pascal so if i put those values so the square will be cancelled from this so you can say d is equals to so 3 is cancelled from this d is equals to 4 t sigma c allowable divided by uh, pi tau allowable clear just write in a slide so d equals to 4 t sigma c allowable divided by pi tau allowable now again remember that you have to if you want if a unit the if you are using the units of sigma c and tau in mega pascal or in pascal you have to convert thickness into meters or if you are using the sigma c or tau in terms of newton per millimeter square then you can directly use thickness so in this particular case, I'm using the neutral per millimeter square. So you know again from your understanding that one one mega pascal is equals to one newton per millimeter square. Clear? So I'm now using the millimeter square. Meter, millimeter square so is four multiplied by thickness is five point five. Sigma C allowable is two twenty five divided by pi into 112.5 so the b will come out to be 14 mm so the diameter of rivet is 14 mm clear now the second thing is to find the pitch of rivet joint so for pitch you know from your class understanding that you have to create a tearing load or the tensile load with the shearing load. Now tensile load as we know is or the tearing load as we know is P minus D into T into sigma T allowable where sigma T allowable is the allowable the normal stress for the plate not for the rivet. You have to remember this. The sigma T allowable is the tearing or the tensile stress allowable tensile stress for the plate. Now because it's a lab joint so so we have n number of rows in this case is 3. So 3, 3 multiplied by number of shearing areas are 1 into pi by 4 d square times sigma 
sorry, not sigma. It's a, it's a shearing load, so we have to write here like tau allowance. Clear? So from this, you can actually determine the p, which is equals to. We just simplify it. You come three pi d square tau allowable divided by four t sigma t allowable plus d. Since sigma t allowable is equals to sigma y over factor of safety. Because using a plate, so it's 500 from our problem. It's 500 for the plate. So 500 divided by 2, we get 250 mega Pascal or Newton per millimeter square. If I put the value here, what you get is 3 into pi. This d is 14 square. Tau allowable is 112.5 divided by. 4 into 5.5 into sigma t allowable is 250 plus 14. Clear? And you what you get is approximately 51.7 mm. There could be a problem in the uh, there could be a difference in the point, but you, you understand the concept. You should understand the concept of this. So we have find the pitch of the joint. Next, we have to find the back pitch. Back pitch between the 2.5 d to 3.0 d. Clear? So in, in the exam also, you have to write the range. So 2.5 into 14 to 3.0 into 14. So range is between. Range is between uh, 35 mm to 42 mm. So uh, the the another check is this pitch this pitch must be at least equal and greater than 3d. So the 3d is actually 42 mm. So your actual pitch is greater than 42 mm. So it design is fine. And the last thing is the margin. In this case, margin is 1.5 d, so that is 1.5 into 14, which is 21. Sorry, which is 21 mm. So we have to we have found the four uh, parameters of design. One is the d, second is the pitch, which is this. Third is the back pitch, which is this. And fourth is the margin. This is for the lab joint. Now, similar is the case for the butt joint. Now you have a double, double riveted, double riveted, double cover butt joint. If if I draw a diagram of a butt joint, for example, this is the this is you can say a very uh, rough diagram of a butt joint. You have two plates and two plates are combined together by means of two cover plates, one above and one down. And between these cover plates, we have two rows of rivet. Two rows of rivet generally means we have one row here, two rows on the one side and two rows on the other side. This is called the double riveted, double cover butt joint. In this case, again, you have to find P. So you have to find D. You have to find P. You have to find PB. Sorry, B in the script. PB. And you have to find um, M. Clear? The, now we will use the same process as we have found these dimensions from the uh, in for the lab joint. Now for D, we have to equate. P S equals to P C. So number of rows are two. Now because it's a double cover butt joint, and you know in double cover butt joint, if I just draw a cross section of it, uh, in double cover butt joint, these are the red denoted two covers, and we have actually two rivets. One rivet is here. Second rivet is probably here. 
so one shearing area is this second shearing area is this so first shearing area and the second shearing area so we have two areas for the way clear so this is for number of rows which are two this two is number of shearing areas per rivet. In case of double cover, we have two areas. Multiply by pi by 4 d square into sigma, not sigma, tau allowable. Tau allowable equals to 2 times which is the number of rows into dt times sigma c allowable. This two is cancelled with this two. This this cancel with this two, you end up with d equals to, or you can take square, uh, cancel the square with the d on the right hand side. d equals to two t sigma c allowable divided by pi tau allowable. Clear? So two into five point five into sigma c allowable is two fifty divided by pi into 112.5 you end up with a value of 7 mm so 7 mm is the diameter of the rivet joint in case of bud joint if you if you consider the bud joint for pitch again we have to use the same relation which is pt is equals to ps pt is p minus d times t into sigma t allowable and now sharing we have 2 into 2 first 2 is for the number of uh, number of rows the second 2 is the number of shearing areas per rivet into pi by 4 d square times tau allowed now we have to just solve it so we get p is equals to this is cancelled with this you get pi d square tau allowable divided by t sigma t allowable plus d so in that case this is pi this is 7 square tau allowable is 112.5 divided by thickness is 5.5 sigma t allowable is okay you have to find the yes it sigma t allowable sigma t allowable is but the shear stress of the plate is 500, 500 divided by 2 is 250. Oh, we have found it before, sorry. We already found it. So it's 250 plus 7. So you get a value of 26.6 mm. So the pitch of the rivet joint is, in case of butt joint, is 26.6 mm. Now we have to find the back pitch, which is between 2.0 D2. 3.0 d 2.5 means 2.5 times 7 to 3.0 times 7 this value has come out to be uh, i think 17.5 mm to 21 mm this is the range of the back last thing is the margin which is 1.5 times d and that is 1.5 times 7, which is 10.5 mm. So these are the uh, all the design parameters for uh, both the lab joint and the bud joint. Clear? So again, you have to check the pitch whether pitch is greater than or equal to 3D or not. So 3D is 3 times 7, which is 21. So it's fine. So it's, if 21 is the minimum pitch. And the actual pitch is 26.6 mm, so that that is fine. Now these this uh, two parts cover the design of both joints. Now these we have to find the uh, efficiency of the joint. For the efficiency, now just draw a brief line here, and now find the efficiency. Efficiency. For that, I just draw a dividing like that. Or just have to find loads. So we have to find shear load, we have to find tensile load, we have to find crushing load. Clear? This is for lab joint, okay? and for the butt joint, we also have to use shearing load, tearing or tensile load, or crushing load. Clear? Now, in case of lab joint, 
you know that we have two rows, so two multiply by number of shearing area is one into pi by four d square. This is the area into tau allowable. Clear? This is what we have to find. In case of the triple riveted lap joint, this value come out to be five two zero zero one point nine newton. Five two zero zero one point nine newton. Or you can say for fifty fifty two kilonewton approximately. For tearing, you know that the value is now in this case D is because we are talking about lap joint. So D is actually fourteen mm, and tau allowable is equals to one one two point five newton per millimeter square. Clear? Now in case of tearing load, we have P minus D times T into sigma T allowable, which is P is in this case lap joint is uh, let let's see. Is fifty one point seven, fifty one point seven minus fourteen, which is D times five point five into and sigma T allowable is two fifty. The value come out to be five one eight two three point eight newton. Clear. Okay. And third is the crushing load, which is again. And now, in case of tensile load, there is no, there is no uh, number of rows which will not be multiplied. Why? Because tearing occurs as the as the row that is closest to the edge. So, so in case of tearing failure or the tensile failure, the number of rows doesn't matter at all, because the the first failure occurs at the row which is closest to the edge. That is what the idea is. Clear. So uh, now what we have is uh, <clears throat> uh, the number of rows which are two. Sorry, uh, so there is some mistake here. Okay. Yes. In case of uh, we have triple riveted. Sorry. Sorry for that. It's a triple riveted, and uh, in case of also uh, the shearing we have triple riveted into d t times. Sigma C allowable, which is three into fourteen into five point five into sigma C allowable is two twenty five. This value come out to be five two zero one two newton. Similar is the case for the butt joint. So for the again we have to now in the butt joint we have two rows. And each rivet is double shear because it's a double cover. So two into two into pi by four d square times tau allowable. This is cancelled with this. What you get is pi times seven square, which is diameter of rivet in case of butt joint, into tau allowable is one one two point five. The answer come out to be. The answer come out to be one seven one seven three zero nine point three newton. Now again for the tearing, for tearing, for tearing is same in both, which is P minus D times T into sigma T allowable. Okay, in the tearing, it is it's the same. So the load is well, yes, but the pitch and diameter is different for butt joint. That's why the value will be different from lap joint. So this will be twenty six. What is the value? It's twenty six point six. Okay, twenty six point six minus seven times five point five into sigma T allowable is two fifty. The tearing load or the tensile load. Come out to be two six nine three six point three 
3 newton and last but not the least is the crushing load that is again 2 is for the number of rows into dt times sigma c allowance so 2 into d is 7, thickness is 5.5 and sigma c allowable is 225. So the value come out to be 17, 17, 32, 3, 2, 5 meters. Now in both these cases, we have determined the minimum of these three loads, clear? So in case of the lab joints, the minimum load is in case of lab, you have to look at 52001, 51823. So, this is the minimum load. This is the minimum load that is occurring in the lab joint. In case of butt joint, the minimum load is, uh, is this, which is the shear. Clear? These are the two. Now, we have to find the efficiency. Efficiency is based on the minimum. Now, before finding the efficiency, we have to find the Strength of the solid plate. Strength of the unriveted plate. Clear? Per pitch length, which is P times T times sigma T allowance. Clear? So P is pitch, which in case of butt joints is. Uh, just, this is the efficiency for lab joint and the least value is 51823.8 divided by in case of pitch we have to use the same formula here but use the values of pitch here is 14 the thickness is 5.5 and sigma t allowable is 250 in case of the lab joint the efficiency come out to be 72.9%. Now, in case of butt joint, again the least value is 17309.3. 17309.3 divided by, I'll uh, use the same, but now pitch and thickness are, uh, pitch is different. So, 7 into 5.5 into sigma t allowable is 250. The efficiency come out to be 47.3%. So, the this we can conclude that the uh, efficiency of lab joint is higher and could have more strength and actually have a more strength as compared to the butt joint with the same plate thickness. I hope you have understood the whole numerical. So, I am just uh, giving an overview of what we have done uh, in this lecture. So, again, I am repeating we have two major parameters to determine. One is the design, sorry, one is the design of a rivet joint, second is the efficiency of rivet joint. So, for design, you have to find diameter, pitch, back pitch, and margin. And for efficiency, you have to find all loads, steering load or tensile load, crushing load, and shearing load. And then determine which one is least. And then based on the least load, we have to find the efficiency of the joint. Now, similar problem is problem number 24 from your slides. In this problem, it says a double riveted lab joint is made of 15 mm thick plate. So, thickness is 15 mm. The rivet diameter and pitch are, so rivet diameter is known, which is 25 mm. And Pitch is 75 mm. Clear? If the ultimate strength in tension, or you can UT, is 400 mega Pascal, 320 in shear, so you can say TU, this is maximum ultimate shearing load, which is 320 mega Pascal, and sigma UC, which is the crushing, ultimate crushing stress. Is 640 mega Pascal. You have to find P minimum. Clear? Yes? It's the same case. Now, the only difference between this numerical and previous numerical, you have to find the rupture force. 
the force which will rupture the joint and rupture occur rupture means failure crack or disintegration uh, rupture will only occur when your stress reaches the ultimate value i'm again repeating rupture only occurs when your stress reaches the ultimate value which is the ultimate tensile stress or ultimate crushing stress or ultimate shearing stress value clear when your actually uh, your, your joint touches the uh, what you can say is the uh, yield stress the, the plastic deformation start but when the stress reaches a point which is called ultimate strength the joint actually fails or the, the material actually fails so we have to find the forces minimum force that will rupture the joint for this particular case again we have to find pt ps and pc same is the case the only difference is now we have a double riveted lap joint so pt is p minus d times p into sigma now it's not allowable you have to remember sigma ut why we have to multiply it with ut i am again repeating it's because in the problem it is written find the minimum force per pitch length which will rupture the joint this is this word is very important so you have to multiply the stress instead of using the uh, allowable stress you have to multiply with the ultimate stress so that is 75 minus 25 times 15 times 400 so the value come out to be i'm just use a calculator for that so it is 50 into 25 sorry into 15 into 400 so the answer is 30000 or you can say it's 300 kN or 300 okay 3 lakh n clear for shearing load the double riveted so we have two for number of rows one is for shearing area Uh, because the lap joint pi by 4 d square and now you have to cause the shear you have to find tau u so 2 into pi by 4 into 15 square into 320 so 2 into or just you have to you can use this to sorry you can say it's 3.14 into 15 square into 150 it's 11 it's 113040 it's 1 lakh 13040 in case of clearing uh, sorry in case of crushing load we have the number of rows which are 2 into dt times sigma uc which is the crushing ultimate crushing load so 2 into 15 into sorry the diameter is 15 and diameter is 25 sorry. okay there is a problem sorry this must be so the value is wrong this must be uh, 25 square into 320 so this is pi times 25 times 160 and the value is 314 Zero 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 meter. So in case of crushing load, the this is two into twenty five into fifteen, and the ultimate shearing load is uh, sorry, ultimate uh, uh, load in compression is six forty. So two into twenty five into fifteen into six forty. That will you come out to be four eight zero 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 newton. Four lakh eighty thousand newton. Now in case of this joint. Which if which joint which is the minimum force? The minimum force is the tearing force. See the least value of thirty 
300 kilo newton whereas in case of uh, shearing we have 314 kilo newton and in case of uh, compression or crushing we have 480 kilo newton so 4 380 uh, pt is uh, least load is 300 <coughs> Uh, 300 kilo newton. Now, the next one. If ab above joints subjected to a load such as fracture safety score, find the actual stresses develop in plates and rivets. Now we have to select a minimum force. So because fracture safety score, so what is demand is you have to take or you can say P allowable is P minimum over force. So P minimum here. This is your P minimum. Clear. So this is three zero 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 or three hundred kilonewton divided by four. So this will become equals to just hold on. Let's see. So let us three zero 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 divided by seventy five thousand newton. Clear. Now we have to find the actual stresses. The actual stresses are the tensile stress, the crushing stress, and the shearing stress. These are the stresses, and we have to use this the minimum load, which is P allowable. We have to use the P allowable, and for that you do not have to use all loads. Please remember that when in those problems which is written like this, so we have to select a load which is minimum, and then. Based on this minimum load, we have to calculate all the parameters. Like in this case, tensile its area is P minus D times T. The load is seventy five thousand divided by which is seventy five diameter is twenty five thickness is fifteen. If I just use my calculator to find out the seventy five thousand divided by Seventy-five thousand divided by seventy over twenty-five is fifty. Fifty into fifteen. The so values come out to be hundred newton per millimeter square or hundred mega pascal. Clear? In case of crushing load, it's P allowable. Same P. One P that is minimum, or we have to divide it by four for the factor of safety. Minimum. And that is equal divided by in case of crushing load, that is number of rows are two times d t, so that will is equal to seventy five thousand divided by two into twenty five into fifteen. If I just two into two twenty five into fifteen, the value will come out to be again. Hundred newton per millimeter square. Clear? So, in case of the shearing load, it's the same load which is P allowable divided by this is two into pi by four d square. Two is the uh, number of rows and shearing area is one. So, just multiply by one. This is seventy five thousand divided by Just cancel with this. It's pi by two into twenty-five square. Clear? So if I just use my calculator to find the value, so it's pi pi into twenty-five square divided by two. So value will come out to be seventy six point four newton per millimeter square. These are the actual stresses which can be developed in the stress. Now I am again repeating the because we have three loads. In the previous slide we have to find three loads to rupture the joint, but the stresses are calculated based on the minimum load, which actually responsible for uh, fa failure in the first. First place, why? Because the safety is only uh, possible, uh, or you can say safety only is 
limit till your lease load is achieved, which in this case is the tearing load. So when we find the actual stresses, we have to keep in mind that we have to select a minimum load for that. And that's a look at the problem. I have also used the same load in all three stresses. That is the minimum load. Clear? Now the last problem, just to give you a hint of, I'm not solving it, but give you a hint of. Clear? And that is the uh, efficiency. So you have to find the efficiency of first is uh, lab joint, it's single limited lab joint, and the second is the double limited lab joint. So you have to find the sorry, it's a single sorry. So we have to compare the efficiency of single lap joint and double lap. Clear? So you know the method you have to find for both these cases you have to find PC, P, S and PT. For this case also you have to find PC, P, S and PT. Select the minimum of these three and find the strength of the, so this will be minimum of PS, PC or PT divided by P into T into sigma T allowable. Sigma T allowable is this 120. Clear? So P is a pitch, T is the thickness. Pitch is known for both. In this case also, you have to minimum of PS, PC, PT divided by P into T times P into T times sigma T allowable. Same, the problem we have solved previously, this is the same problem. The only difference is now we have to compare two types of lab joints. Clear? So they have to find all these PSP3 for both joints, find the uh, identify the minimum value, and based on the minimum value, you have to find the efficiency of both joints. So that is all from my side for today's lecture. Thank you very much for your time for listening.